In the well-guarded chambers of the Holy See, under the watchful eyes of the Swiss Guard and hand-picked contingents of winged communicants rest the greatest treasures of the church militant, the collection of the true remains of saints. Within these catacombs and chambers rests one of the very greatest secrets of the church. The bones of St. Barbara, the ashes of St. John the Warrior, the severed hand of St. Teresa of Avila, and the reliquary of St. Andrew the General, and many, many others rest here protected by both the might of arms and prayers of the faithful. Hundreds of the most devout members of the church will rotate in shifts, reciting passages from the New Orthodox Syncretic Bible, and it has been said that even active cardinals and popes have spent their time here, bolstering the walls of salvation with their faith. But few know of the true role of these relics, or why they are so fiercely guarded. The long-dead martyrs form the supreme advisory body of the church and the armies of the faithful. In times of dire need, their holy remains are brought to the great council chambers so the princes of the church led by the cardinal of war and temporal rulers of the free lands can ask for their guidance. Such consultation is not undertaken lightly. Only truly vital issues such as dispatching one of the irreplaceable paladins on a mission to Inferno, opening up a new front in the Great War, or determining the hidden plans of the Lord of the 66 are worthy of the attentions of the Council. Many of the Church's most pivotal victories, such as the stopping of the two great hegemons, Yersina Rex, Emperor of Pestilence and Febris, the Rotting Bride of Beelzebub, have stemmed from information gathered via the Council of Saints. For it is a costly and perilous ordeal. Reliquaries holding the remains are brought forth. The reliquaries themselves are many and varied, styled in line with whatever the Church felt was in keeping with the honoured action of the saints themselves and the subtle shifting styles of the time. Cables are connected to the machines of the Synod of Strategic Prophecy to establish communication to the souls of the saints. Then, finally, the tacticians of the Synod, the purest and the most gifted, attach their spinal cables to the prophetic machines so the saints may talk through them. It takes long years to train a tactician but the mental and physical strain of communing with saints ages them at a rate of a year per heartbeat, and even when they might not succeed. Sometimes the link between the tactician and the relic saint is too weak, their voice is a mere whisper. At other times they speak a long-forgotten, incomprehensible language that the scribes of the Holy See will struggle to even decipher. And these are not the greatest of the challenges either. The infernal powers are well aware of the council, and through the corrupted saintly relics they hold, the great lords of hell are roused when the council is in session, and they set forth to challenge their hated opponents with their own unholy powers. On such occasions, a fierce spiritual battle takes place, and the skies above Rome burn with hellfire and flashes with holy lightning. The immense strain the devils put on the tacticians ages them further, and they will enter the chamber in the flower of their youth and come out of it as an ancient, decrepit husk. Many are possessed by the most spiteful demons and rend themselves apart to disrupt the rituals. In proportion, the casualty rates of the council are greater than the trenches of the Great War. The tacticians know that communing with the saints is to give almost their entire life if for one brief moment, yet doing so is seen as the greatest of honours. To commune with those who have been so resoundedly favoured by God is seen as the most beneficial way that any of them could spend their life, and the benefits to the church and the advantages that it can give in the war against hell cannot be overstated. Sadly, despite their holy rank, the saints are not infallible. They hold great knowledge as they did in life, and they advise the cardinals of war as best they are able, but their advice is often given as revelation that is hard to decipher. And not all of the relics guide humanity faithfully. There are cleverly wrought forgeries by the heretic necromancer clerics, disguised by allusions to fool even the most experienced examiner priests. 
A corrupt relic saint can wreak havoc at the very heart of the Holy See. Demons can use them as conduits to mislead the council, or learn the identity of its secret members so that they may later be targeted by death commando assassination squads. Some are true relics that the heretic saint hunters have discovered, infected with might demons and then reburied. It often happens that during a council meeting these vile creatures come forth and then silently enter the mouths and eyes of the mortal conduits of the saints. They burrow their way into the central nervous system of their victims, ending their lives in withering agony. It is said that Satan will handsomely reward any saint hunter that causes interruption, confusion or death among the tacticians with their own fiefdom and legions in hell. So the saint hunters act with incredible cunning and viciousness in the execution of their plans. It has been claimed in Hush Whisper that the 1666 capture of Gibraltar by the heretic fleet was assisted by the placement of a forged relic feeding false information to the council after they questioned it about the mysterious weapon that destroyed New Antioch over a hundred years earlier. Taking into account all these tribulations, it is no wonder that the papal expedition forces are continually scouring the world for true relics of saints to strengthen the council, and the Supreme Pontiff pays handsomely for curated relics brought forward by the warband scouring the no man's land. While the small scale battles and efforts of man and beast that take place in the no man's land in the quieter times between the great wars may not cost as many immediate lives, it is without doubt that both heaven and hell expect these engagements to be just as impactful in the overall course of the war. It is for this reason that thousands of men and women will venture deep into the deserts of the Levant each year, or silently and secretly scour the fields and forests of Europe, in search for anything that they can find that might give them the advantage over their enemies. It is these battles, resolved a bullet and a blade at a time, that will truly set the course for mankind's salvation or destruction.